Hey guys, what's up? Jed here. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be speaking about the basics in algebra. And we're going to begin by speaking about variables. What are variables? They're essentially letters used in algebra for numbers that are unknown. So when you're solving an equation, or if you're speaking about a number, but you're not necessarily speaking about a specific number, you can use a variable in its place. X is the most common variable used in algebra, but you can have other variables like Y, Z, and M. Now, let's speak about how we can treat variables and how they behave. So if you wanted to multiply a single number with a variable, this is what your multiplication would look like. And the simplified version of that would look like this. And what if you wanted to multiply two variables together? Let's say X and Y. The simplified version of that would be x and y. So if you see a number and a variable next to each other like this, you can immediately assume that there's multiplication occurring between them. And the same as this xy here. You should also note that xy here produces the same value as y times x, which is yx. So these two variables or these two terms can be taken to be the same thing. When you're adding variables, they behave similar to numbers. So let's take a look if we want to add a few x's together. So x plus x plus x. It's kind of like saying I want to add three objects together. Well, how many of these objects do I have? It's just three of them, three x. And that's what it's like. But you have to be careful and not confuse it with multiplying three variables. So if I wanted to multiply x times x times x, it's not the same as adding three variables. So this will not give you three x. It will behave in a similar way to numbers. And it will give you, the simplified version, will be x to the power of three. And of course, you can combine these statements to have things such as this, x multiplied by x multiplied by x squared which will be x times x, x squared times another x squared. So this is essentially just x times x times x times x, which can be simplified to x to the power of four. So how many variables you're multiplying together that are the same can be simplified with a single variable and a power on top indicating how many times it's been multiplied. We can also combine this with different variables. So if we wanted to do x multiplied by x multiplied by y, we would get the simplified version, which is x to the power of two, because there's two of them being multiplied together, multiplied by y. But remember what I said, if you have two different variables multiplied together, you could just leave them next to each other like this. And this is a simplified version. If you had two variables dividing each other, let's say x divided by y, the simpler way of writing this would just be as a fraction, x over y. And this is also the preferred method as well. Once again, combining all of these simplifications, we can take a look at the following example to see how it could be done. So here, we can just simplify the left-hand side first to give us two. The two x is being multiplied together, so it will be x to the power of two. And then there's a y being multiplied onto it, so it will just get latched onto it here. And this is going to be divided by and of course, bid mass, we do what's in the brackets first. So a squared multiplied by a, there's three a's being multiplied together here. And then another variable b, which we can just place next to it. So now we have a division between 2x squared y and a to the power of 3b, which can be simplified as follows. 2x squared y as a fraction over a to the 3 times b. If you had, for example, 0 0.5 x, this is okay to write. Another way of writing this could be a half x. And yet another way of writing this could be x over 2. They all mean the same thing, and you will see them depending on the question written in one of these ways. Bid mass affects variables in the same way that they affect numbers, as you saw a few examples ago. But let's do another one just to emphasize it. So let's say we had x plus x plus x plus x divided by two times y times z. You do what's in the brackets first, and then you'd perform the operations on the outside in order. So in this case, we would end up with 
4x divided by 2yz. And this can be simply written as a fraction as 4x over 2yz. Something I should note, by the way, when you're writing the variables and there are different variables, you should try to write them in alphabetical order, just out of good form. It's not necessarily going to be wrong if you don't write them in alphabetical order, but you could think of it as being grammatically correct in maths if you do write them in alphabetical order. A very important identity that people just neglect in algebra is the following one. Very simple, but very powerful. A single variable on its own, without any numbers next to it, actually represents a variable with a one in front, a one as a power, and a one as a denominator. So if you are performing calculations and you require the use of the power, the coefficient, which is the number in front of the variable, or to the left of the variable, or the denominator of the variable, a lone variable has one all around it. And this is something that will be very helpful. And that's pretty much it for the basics in algebra. It's very important that you learn these basics because you will definitely be applying them in the later parts of algebra and in maths generally. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.